What inspired both of you to be an author? So actually, I didn't really want to be an author uh, when I was growing up. I really, really loved reading. And I actually used to get into trouble at school for reading too much. Um, so I went to work for publishers because that was um, the best way I could find to get to read lots and lots of books. Um, and I started working, I started writing while I was working as an editor at a publisher. So I was the person that authors would send their books to when they'd first written them. And um, it was great because I got to spend my whole time reading. But as I was working as, as an editor and reading all of these amazing books and getting to work with authors, um, I realized that I would really love to write too. So I, I think I was inspired by all the authors I worked with um, while I was working as an editor. Um, it's for both of you. When did you start making books? Um, so I started. Uh, well, I started really differently to Holly. I started with drawing because I was drawing when I was really, really small. I used to go around crawling on the floor and I'd drawn on the walls and my mother got me some paper to do that that on and I started from drawing and I'd make books with drawings but that was before I, I could read and write and then when I could read and write I could add the words to it and it, it came from there but my really started with with drawing. And um, what, what about Holly? What about Holly? <laughs> A much, much, much later than Steve, because I wrote my first book when I was 28, so much older, because before then I would say I was a reader um, rather than a writer, although I, I really love drawing too, but I'm no way as um, amazing and professional as Steve is, so um, yeah, a lot later, I was 28 when my first book was published. And um, what, what does it feel to be an uh, author for the first time? Oh, wow. It's it's wonderful. It's so exciting, partly because we get to talk to people like you, people who read our books, which is just wonderful and so exciting. There's there's nothing like being told that your books have helped someone to love books and reading. And sometimes that your books have helped people to love writing as well, because um, it's amazing when your books get to inspire somebody else to be a writer, too. That's so really, really exciting. Um, what about uh, uh, uh. I was going to say, um, you could be an author as well, because you can write some story. The school is a very good place to do it, because um, you could write a story, or you could even, uh, with a friend, you could work together on something. You might do pictures and a story. Okay. What inspired you to make books? Steve, do you want to go first? I feel like I've, I've been... I think first you know, yeah, yeah, I'll do that one. Well, I think I was saying before to the other interviewer that I'd started by doing drawing and I'd made books from that. I did this, did the, I'd do a drawing and then I want to know what happened after and I'd do another drawing with what happened after and then I'd add some words. So it was a bit like a cartoon strip. You know, when you see people have speech bubbles and they're saying what they're doing, and then you do the next one, and there's a different picture. And that, that's what I did. But uh, the first books that I got published came when my children were very little. And um, I started noticing how they were learning to do things. And that gave me the ideas for the story. So that's how I started. And by the way, Holly, um, I'm reading, uh, um, I don't know how to pronounce the name, uh, N-A-D-E-A, -A, I'm a forever kitten. Do you know what, that is my, I think that is my favourite of the, of the kitten book covers. I love that kitten, in fact, I'm going to turn the camera around a bit for a minute so you can see my shelves there, because I've got, now, oh, at the right angle, where are we? There you go, can you see, look, I've got, um, I've got the same one on my shelves because I love that cover so much. Um, are you enjoying it? Yes, I'm up to um, page 54. Fantastic. Oh, you're doing really well. That's not you starting today, is it? Uh, yes, yeah. 
oh my goodness that's but this makes me think I need to write faster because if you've started that yesterday and you're already nearly halfway through yeah I need to go faster now I've forgotten what the question was was it um what, what made you first want to write books what inspired you to write books yeah so when I was working as an editor we had um we had we published lots of books every year and we had a series that was just finishing about a club um, for girls. It was called Glitter Girls, actually, that series. And it was my job as an editor to try and come up with some ideas for new book series that we might, we might want to publish. And we were going to have this big meeting where we talked about all our different ideas. And in that meeting, I talked about an idea I'd had for um, a series of books about triplet sisters who would be identical triplets, so three girls, who looked exactly the same on the outside, but really hated it that everyone mixed them up because on the inside, they felt really, really different. Um, and what I was actually supposed to do was go away and think about that idea and maybe think of um, what the characters would be like. And then as an editor, go and talk to some of the authors we worked with and say, look, we've had this book idea. What do you think? Do you think that's something you might like to write? But when I went away and thought about the series idea, and about the characters and their pets and named them and thought about what their house would look like, I realized I really didn't want somebody else to write that book. So instead I decided I would try and write it myself. And I wrote almost all of that book on the train because I was commuting from Reading where I live now to London where I worked in an office. And because the trains into London were so, so busy in the early mornings, most of the time I used to have to sit on the floor of the train. So most of my first book got written on the floor of a train. And then I had to tell everybody I worked with what I'd done, which was very, very scary. So yeah, that's how I got started. Do you have any pets? Did you catch that? Yeah, was that for me or was that for Steve? Or was it for both of us? Who do we want to start? Should we go back to Steve? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I've still got got the geese because um, the first books were little baby girls who's here and there was his first uh, book and that was based on some geese I had in the garden when my children were young and a little story about the goose that um, had trouble hatching the egg and that's where the story came from. I've still got three geese and they live in the garden here behind me. And so they're the pets that I have. The other pets really are, are wild animals. They're not really pets, but we've got um, a robin called Stan comes around and eats cheese. And we think of him as a pet because he's always coming there, but they're really wild. And we've got a lot of newts that live in our pond and we think of them a bit as pets as well. But it's the geese that are more like the real pets, I suppose. Or they don't think so. They think they own the garden. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to say, Holly? Because you've got some pets, haven't you? Yeah, we've got three cats. In fact, I, I had to shut the door of, of my office because uh, my cats like to come and walk over the computer. And I was a bit worried that if they, if they came in while... Um, while I was talking to you, they might accidentally disconnect me. Uh, but yeah, we have three cats who are called Millie, Poppy and Star. And just um, Steve just saying that he's got newts in his garden. We've got frogs in our garden as well, which I know we have because the cats brought a frog into the kitchen this morning and I had to rescue it. Yeah. Which book are you most proud of, Steve? Yeah, well, for me, um, I still think Baby, baby Goz, you know, um, but just something about it. A very simple book, but um, what I was trying to do was just get enough words that someone would need at that age. Because sometimes things can be very complicated. I, I feel they're quite complicated for me now, but at that age, even more so. So I was trying to get down to be a, as simple as possible, but just the, the first introduction to reading, which would be questions and answers and that you'd only have on the page something which in the this one you'd have the question and you wouldn't see the answer till you open the flap 
So it was to make it more simple so you're not bombarded with too much information. And I still think that that's my favorite one, yeah. Can you both name a movie that you really like? Um, a what? Sorry, I got on that. Can you both name a movie that you really like? Name a memory. A movie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what were you saying? Um, well, I saw, I saw one last night. Um, they hadn't seen for a long time. Speeds, <laughs> that was quite good. Where um, Sandra Bullock has to drive a bus and she mustn't get below a certain speed, otherwise it'll blow up. And that was quite, that was quite exciting. I saw that last night, yeah. <laughs> I think I'm probably, I'm actually really proud of my very first book. So that was the first book in the triplet series that I was telling Luna about because I'm proud of me for being brave enough to decide that I was going to write it because um, I'm I'm not a very daring person and it was quite a big decision to make to 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 write the book and to and then to show it to people as well which um, was quite was very scary so I really love that one and I'm also really proud of a book that's being published next week um, which is a very different book to ones I've written before it's about otters and it's a fantasy um, so it's set on the riverbank um, and it's and being published on Thursday. So I'm really excited and proud about that one at the moment. And I, and in answer to your question about movies, I really love musicals. I love um, singing and dancing. And one of the best films I've seen recently was the new film version of West Side Story, which was amazing. What style of books do you read? And by the way, I'm up to chapter five now. Oh, you're doing amazingly. I read a lot of different books, actually. I, I love fantasy and science fiction. I really like detective stories. There's a brilliant detective story series called Rivers of London, which is all about a department of the uh, Metropolitan Police who deal with all the ghosts and the kind of magical characters. But I read lots of children's books as well because um, it's really important to kind of see what other people are writing and keep up with, with, um, with what's going on in the children's book world. So I've got a new book, which I'm really excited to start. I haven't started it yet. It's called um, Skandar and the Unicorn Thief. Thief. I can't say thief. I'm not very good with TH. Um, Skandar and the Unicorn Thief, which I'm really excited to start. It might well be, there might be a copy in the library as well. Um, I think I've seen that. Stay here. Be careful with that wire. Hold on, we've got to ask Steve. Well, Go on, ask Steve. What was that? Uh, ask later. Okay. 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 Oh, do it now. Look, he's ready. He's got his, he's got his answer ready. There you go. Yeah. Uh, what type of books do you like, Steve? Well, like Holly, I, I've read quite a few children's books to see what other people are doing. Maybe some uh, friends of mine are doing as well. And also history books. I'm very interested in, in history books. I think the important thing is that all writers have to read a lot because there's nothing that makes you better as a writer than reading lots and lots of books. Exactly, yes. What animal would you like to be? Did you get that, guys? Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Do you know, I think I would be a cat because our three cats spend their lives asleep, being fed, wandering around in the garden to find nice sunny patches, and then being fussed over, um, I quite fancy being a cat. I think I might like to be a horse, but I have to live with a lot of other horses, not on the, not on my own in the field. And I could gallop about. I'd like that. A cat and a horse, Ray. What <laughs> would you be? Um, a crocodile. A crocodile. Oh, <gasps> Gosh. He'd eat us up. It's snappy. Yeah, that sounds scary. Where were you born? Where was I born? Yeah. I was born near Scarborough in Yorkshire, by the sea, a place called Caton. 
And uh, now, after living in London and other places, I've come back to live, live near there again by the sea. Brilliant. Sorry, you're breaking up a bit, but right. I think we're all right. Anne Holly? I was born in London, but funnily enough, my mum is from Whitby or um, just down the Saltburn, just down the road from Whitby, which is really close to where Steve um, was born, I think, and probably quite close to where Steve is living now. That's really funny because my mother used to live in Saltburn. <laughs> How strange. Yeah. When, she, when she was a teenager. Yeah. And it's beautiful yeah. past the world. Coast Guard cottages. Yeah. And I've got one just to finish off. Um, have you got anything in the works at the minute as authors that you'd like to share with us? So uh, I'm I'm sort of gearing up for my my new book, The Story of Green River, being published next week. Um, but I'm in the middle of actually finishing. It's really funny because the first book is only being published next week, but I'm in the middle of finishing off the sequel. So I've written um, three what's it called drafts, so like three versions of the book so far. So I'm just kind of polishing it up um, for it to be ready to be published later on next year. Amazing. Well, you've got lots of new fans in this room, so they'll be looking out for that, Holly. Steve? Um, well, I've got a story that I hope I'll get go again called um, Too Bumpy for Bobby, which is uh, about a little wombat who uh, lives in the desert in Australia. And it's a sort of, I suppose, a first going to school kind of book where you're going to be leaving your family, lives down deep in a hole with his family and he's got to go up to the top to see what's happening at the top and he goes up the tunnels to see what's going on and some things aren't just right for him there's kangaroos that are all going up but he's too bumpy for Bobby and there's, cro there's crocodiles in that as well but they're too it's too snappy for Bobby but then he finds some little animals which are just right and they play together and then he goes back down and it, it's a I suppose a bit about finding your way when you're just going to start school. So that, that's the book that was put on now. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Right, we're going to finish with a Media Cubs classic. The director's going to come in and do a bit. Know what to say? Cut. Yay. Right. I like well, well done. Yeah.